we're here to talk about Maine Terrain, and that's what was in your book. Um, but really to talk about Maine Terrain and why it's a um, thus far an excellent project, um, we really had to start way back 10 years ago and even before that. So our first slide is <laughs> Main Street, Chattanooga's Main Street, um, in the 1800s. We, we're pretty sure that's when this um, photo was taken. We have asked a number of people, and no one seems to know the exact date. So, you know, back then, Main Street was this thriving um, thoroughfare from east to west. And um, as transportation methods changed from horse and train to uh, the automobile and uh, the way our city changed, Main Street was really cut off. And um, we at Lindhurst, as well as many other partners in the community, really started talking about the south side. Main Street is, um, is neighbors, is the thoroughfare for four neighborhoods. Um, and um, some of those neighborhoods were there forever. Some of them are really kind of newly formed. They had had houses, the houses were knocked down, they were a very blighted community and how we transformed those. We won't get much into um, the discussion of the residential building, but that has been a definitely part of the Main Street comeback. Um, so this conversations around the South Side neighborhood started around, around 2002 with Charette's and kind of knowing who the community players are, who the business owners that were longstanding, who the property owners were. And, um, you know, the conversation has really bloomed from there. Um, so this is 1800s. This is what it looked like um, really for the, you know, flip it, um, really for a whole generation of Chattanoogans. You would put on, if you had to go east to west and use Main Street, you would put on blinders and you would drive as fast as you could unless you were looking for some unsavory um, things to purchase. Um, so really, you know, this is what it looked like um, five years ago, seven years ago. And, um, you know, we can continue on. Um, you know, there were, there were businesses there in some of the buildings. Um, they weren't necessarily something that um, everyone felt welcomed at. Um, and there were buildings that were boarded up. Um, that's really kind of starts 2002, 2005, 2007. A communication, um, a community charrette was born and um, public art was introduced. Yeah, um, and the, the presentation before us, um, the keynote was so interesting, as Dan said, because, you know, almost every single thing that he's observed in his own work and that he was talking about are ingredients that we've been working on. And these weren't magical things that happened overnight. You know, this is a lot of work and a lot of community building and a lot of meetings and lots of charrettes. And this isn't something that was said, hey, this is a great idea. Let's do it. Let's write a grant. Let's do it and, and implement it. This is a culmination of a lot of experimentation. And I love what he said about serendipity because as Dan mentioned, there was one grant that we didn't get, and it was serendipitous and wonderful that we didn't, because I think at the end we have a better project. Um, but one of the things that, um, that we learned early on is that public art is a wonderful tool in revitalization. It's not the only thing. There's businesses, there's residences, um, there's green spaces and parks, but what we did in, in addition to all these other aspects is we started a program where we had rotating sculpture um, on the sidewalks um, coincided with a streetscape improvement program. So as we worked with Public Works to get new sidewalks, benches, bike racks, trees, we built some uh, permanent pedestals that would house rotating sculpture every two years. Uh, we issued a call to artists. Uh, we initially started with a very small footprint and then it had, we've expanded that um, to a regional call now. So we started this in 2007, so every two years we've rotated out. Um, we started with seven sculptures, we've now expanded to 13. And I think the current show that's up now um, that has 13 works will um, be rotating out in the fall. So we'll do another call to that. Um, artists get paid. Um, we're very, we feel very uh, strongly about that. And we get really great quality. We have purchased work out of this from time to time to build a collection. But what this has done is it's really um, gotten people slowing down. It's gotten feet on the street. It's humanized the space. It's done all those things that we talked about um, earlier about creative placemaking. And it's made things interesting where you're not driving down at 50 miles an hour with your car locked um, to, to get through a space, but it makes you want to stop and, and you know, really participate. These are just some of the um, you know, brochures that we did. We had a guide by sale program. 
where, where are the artists from and, and how do you we do. Um, we have a um, a process. It's a it's a R, it, for this one. It's an RFP, a request for proposal process. Um, when we first started this, we just focused on people that lived in a 50 mile radius. Um, and as we grew, we now do a regional call. So um, that includes maybe seven to ten states. And we have a jury process. We have a committee that um, is made up of public art committee as well as stakeholders in the neighborhood. Um, and we have, you know, cr criteria, guidelines, and, and all of that that we do for everything that, that we place. So these are just some um, examples of some of the works um, that have um, come and gone. These um, dogs were in front of the fire hall, which was a really great serendipitous um, place make because of the Dalmatian dog. Um, and in addition to these rotating pieces, um, we have a, a very well-known artist by the name of John Henry who lives and works in Chattanooga, and he makes monumental pieces that are exhibited all over the world. And we invested in a loan program for one of his works to go in front of the fire hall, which was sort of a um, one of one of two brand new buildings. One was a school and one was the fire hall on this very early stages of um, Main Street development. And this was something that could be seen from way down the street, from across the block. It's big, it's red, and it really signaled change and something positive and something exciting and really was a visual draw for people to, um, you know, to come down and it connected all these smaller works. I want you to remember this slide because this tool worked so well, this work is no longer there, um, that we have implemented it as we begin to talk about main terrain. So as Tom mentioned earlier today, it takes a lot of different tools to make a great place. And um, when Lindhurst was in its earlier um, works on Main Street, um, we used a lot of different tools. Peggy's talked about the public art in the sidewalk as we repaired sidewalks as one of them. Um, one of our tools was using facade grants that went to property owners to help um, just improve the facade of the, of the buildings in which they owned. And, um, you know, we were lucky, Main Street, from um, an initial just swipe of the territory we, we were working in, because we were trying to get density in one or two blocks on the street, um, had a lot of great bones, a lot of buildings that had fabulous bones that we were able to really work with. Um, one of them um, is now a um, resource center for green building, and it's called Green Spaces. And so this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. And so um, the next couple slides are just showing some of our, our um, probably best, best steps, um, best um, property owners, what has really worked out really well. Um, this is now, this is what the then is on the left-hand side, the um, now is on the right. And I have to say that the picture on the right is probably an after, but there's an after after shot. This was taken about two years ago. And the um, piece in the front is by an artist, Isaac Duncan. He's a Chattanooga artist. And that is one of the pieces that has been permanently purchased for um, the public art collection in Chattanooga. Um, Terminal Proof Pub, um, this was um, the baggage. When you would go and hop on trains, this is where the baggage um, building would be. Is that? OK. Um, and so it was falling down probably weeks away from the city saying, we're going to knock it down because it is a hazard. And it is now a great place to go and get a pub or go and get a beer on 5 o'clock on Friday. So um, this is a heart, the Heart Gallery, um, which is um, a gallery for those folks that um, are transient in our community, that it's a way of income for them. Um, and so, and it's a living space upstairs. Um, one of our other uh, tools that we used was a great marketing campaign. And it was kind of Main Street Works um, kind of type of concept. And, you know, Main, Main Street means business. And we, this was probably five years into our work. And we did a business issue in which we pulled all of the people that are there every day on the street and took pictures of them with their works from artists to folks that are entrepreneurs to folks that are um, there for green spaces uh, or green building um, center um, to the Chattanooga Choo Choo which is a long standing iconic building in our community and so we kind of highlighted what each person does and who they are and how to contact them if you're wanting to purchase a um, piece of furniture from Haskell Sears Design or um, go and work out at Get Built. Um, so 
Um, the other one of the other thing is helping businesses, um, helping them connect with um, business. Uh, programs where they can really do a business plan and then helping them, setting them up with the property owners to, to set up a actual shop. So um, one of the things, that, you know, you can't just have businesses and um, great sidewalks, you got to have people there. And so um, something that was launched six years ago, and if you guys are in town in Chattanooga or would like to come to Chattanooga on December 1st, it's always the first Saturday of December, um, there is this awesome party called Main Times 24 and it's 24 hours and usually it ends up being 28 hours of just non-stop activity up and down Main Street and um, you know it's not only do the buildings look good but you, the people are there um, engaging and um, transforming the street for that one day and um, it, this, uh, there's no way to really count um, <laughs> the people because there's so much coming through but um, when Peggy and I were driving here yesterday, we texted um, one of the main volunteer coordinators for this, and he says, well, we think about 10,000 people show up throughout the day. And honestly, I would say that's a probably good, good um, bet, because throughout the day, some people come in the morning, some people are there for the late, late, late night party, some people are there just for the parade. So it brings a lot of people in. Um, one of the last things, and this wasn't just a Main Street activity, but um, a tool that Chattanooga has used, is we have re just recently launched our bike share program. And so um, you can get either a membership or a daily pass. And there's a bunch of bike stations, you know, this was launched really in Paris, was one of the first cities that did this, um, which you um, put in your card, you pull out a bike, you cruise it to your, your destination, put it into a rack, and go to your meeting and then vice versa on the way out. And Main Street has two bike share stations that are on the street and then a third one that's just located right off the street um, at the Chattanooga Choo Choo. So it's a great way for folks that um, aren't necessarily living and working in the area but for tourists as well to get around. So I think Peggy you have the next slide. Um, one thing I want to make sure that you understand as we kind of start moving towards discussing the main terrain is that this work is focusing on East Main and East Main is kind of East and West Main are divided by a very um, almost like a highway it's broad street but it's a thoroughfare it's not pedestrian friendly um, it's not particularly attractive and all of these tools that we're talking about have worked so well on East Main that as we begin thinking about West Main, um, you'll, we'll, we'll get to that, but I want to make sure you understand that Main Street is long, but this is one portion and, and we're testing out lots of different um, methods and ingredients to, to make that revitalized. Um, back to public art, um, we did a, um, a really kind of an experimental program for doing a public art project that was temporary in nature, and it was meant to go away, and it was called On the Fence, and you know, driving around Main Street before it is as it is today, there are tons and tons of really ugly chain link fences. They were either in front of abandoned buildings or you know, manufacturing sites, and they were just an eyesore. So we wanted to draw attention in a creative way to the chain link, hoping that they might tear them down at one point, um, people might pay attention to the property behind it and reinvest, and those things have happened. So we launched a very small um, a local competition where we engaged artists, teams, schools, um, anybody that wanted to put a proposal together would be juried in to look at eight different fences that we had selected and worked with the property owners on, and they could do something on those fences for 3000 um, bucks. So we had some great, great um, pieces that came out of it. This is a, a piece done by an architectural firm that lives and works in the neighborhood. Um, these are you know, bamboo um, pieces that are woven through a fence that looks onto a chicken plant. Um, this is a piece by an architect um, named Christian Rushing. Um, this had an LED system in it that lit up at night um, and provided this really nice glow. And I want to show you a pullback of this one. This is um, the before shot of the fence. This is uh, what we call the Goodyear property. 
and then this is an after. And you know, this was up for you know a very short amount of time, um, or until it disintegrated. We did have that caveat because we had some things that didn't last so well. But that was the purpose. It was really to draw attention and create some change. This particular property now um, is home to a, um, a CrossFit um, business that has been a real integral part of the main terrain through this active art we'll talk about later. Um, we got some national um, attention for this project. Um, we were awarded a Bright Ideas Award from the Ash Center through the Harvard Kennedy School, which um, has really been great in leveraging more grants like the one we got um, with the NEA. Yeah. When you all um, wrote the NEA grant, and there's a limited amount, of course, of how much you can write, did you all <coughs> cover a lot of the, the historical stuff? You thought that was a good way to... Uh, establish we did not to the extent we're doing today because uh, yeah um, but but we have to I mean in order to um, show that we can do this on West Main you know you, we had to show that we've implemented it and then it has been a proven working method on the work that we've done so far about what percentage of the NEA grant do you think you, you dedicated to a couple of sentences. Yeah, a couple of sentences. I mean, yeah, I mean, you really don't have much space at all. Um, and then you have a work sample that you have to submit, which is a very limited number of, of images. Um, so we could talk about some of that, but maybe show one slide. Yeah, and yeah. we had some great words in this. I mean, we wrote and then rewrote and then rewrote and yeah. rewrote. Um, and, and having submitted one proposal that didn't get it, um, we were able to tweak that a little bit more and a year later really be like, okay, we've honed in what we really mean by this, you know. It's kind of that 30-second elevator speech that you're selling yourself yeah. on, yeah. on paper. Well, that's a good segue because, you know, as, as, as we started seeing all this great change and people moving in and opening businesses and walking and biking on East Main, you know, we needed to cross over the Broad Street jump and over to West Main. And there is a long-range plan for the Tennessee River Walk to connect West Main with the river walk in front of our waterfront district. Um, so we were thinking long term about how to really uh, create a piece to that connection, and West Main is, is a key ingredient there. Um, yeah. You keep referring to the grant that you did here. Was that also an outcome? I'm going to tell you about that right now. <laughs> it's a good Great segue. lead in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, so what, what we wanted to do with West Main is we wanted to get um, some activity on the street. And we wanted to do it in a little bit different way than just you know, public art on the sidewalk. So we started doing some research on art that was interactive um, or encouraged physical activity and physical movement. So this is not what we did, but this is an example that we found in another city of a shelter, a, a bus shelter or a bench that could double as a place to stretch or a place to you know, do yoga or um, you know, some other kind of just active, active um, activity. Um, this is a early photograph of our CrossFit group, um, and they kind of planted the seed in this active art piece because what they did is they commissioned an artist to build a really interesting monkey gym for them in their workout. And it became a piece of sculpture, it became a landmark, and it kind of was a great way to involve the arts in activity and in business and in activating the street and they have remained to be a partner and they're the ones that now occupy that that Goodyear lot that um, that I told you about. Um, these were just some other early thinkings. These slides were actually submitted in our first grant um, that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, this is an example from Nashville from um, their uh, bike rack program and I'm not sure where this is from, but we, um, we found it. I think it's in Europe. And it was just this wonderful sculptural thing that people could figure out how to do something active on um, and, and, and really do creative play. Um, other things that we thought about in our early thinking um, were sidewalks. So we had some artists develop some ideas early on about working out on the sidewalk and using the sidewalk as a um, a place to do, you know, athletic runs, or this is the Broad Street Jump. Um, these are just little icons on showing how you can use, you know, certain elements and really look at the sidewalk as art, but as a circuit training um, course. And we put this together as an active art proposal um, 
for the uh, 25th anniversary initiative um, for the National Endowment for the Arts Mayor's Institute on Design. And we submitted this grant application under the guise of Active Art on West Main, and we did not get the grant. We called the NEA for some feedback um, to you know, kind of figure out what we needed to work on. And um, you know, they, they really felt like it was a strong proposal because we had done so much work with the athletic community, with businesses in the neighborhood, and done all our due diligence and built these great conversations and ideas um, but it, it wasn't quite there. But in our conversation with the NEA, they said, well, we're getting ready to launch a new grant that we haven't even written the guidelines for, and it's called Our Town. And we really think this will be a good fit, and we would encourage you to apply. So what that did is it got us re-energized and back to the table and really refined our thinking about you know, what was weak about our proposal and building some more partnerships. So we applied for the grant, um, and we entitled it Main Terrain, and it is, um, we were awarded a $250,000 grant. And I'm going to get Rudy, um, well, let me, let me back up one moment. Um, do you remember the uh, slide with the big red X, the big max? Um, well, we, uh, to get over to the Broad Street Jump down West Main, we decided to use that same method. Um, so we did a call to artists nationally uh, for a monumental piece of sculpture on a corner lot. This is uh, Broad Street right here. There's one of the sculptures that I think I showed earlier, but this is Broad and so this is Main here. So this is a real critical corner um, and it is owned by Regions Bank. So it's a private piece of property that we partnered with Regions on. We did a national call and um, selected Albert Paley, who's a very well-known um, artist out of Rochester, and this is a piece on loan. So this was kind of the first thing that was down there. We did lots of landscaping. This was a $20,000 loan, um, so we couldn't have bought the piece for $20,000, but it, it's a great investment, and it'll be up for two years. I'm going to get Rudy to talk about the site and why it became from active art to main terrain and get that a little bit. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, Dan mentioned underutilized assets earlier, and this is the, the big mama jama on underutilized assets. Um, you know, this, this area has some challenging. One is, so this is Main Street, um, that east-west corridor, and this is broad, and this is what we're talking about on, you know, thoroughway, people are getting to work, they're moving fast. Um, um, one of the other challenges on it is in this corner, there's a chicken plant that's been there for a long time. Um, and some days you kind of hold your breath and roll up your windows when you're driving by it. Um, and when I was talking about earlier, we, there was really good bones of buildings in, in the earlier Main Street phase. You know, this area, as you start heading west towards the river, um, there's not a lot of bones of buildings. You know, it's more manufacturer-oriented but it's a still great linkage to another community at the end of the street and, and eventually into our river walk extension. So, um, you know, underutilized asset all the way. Um, up here, an asset is, um, this is the Chattanooga, um, which is a hotel, conference center. Um, right on the other side over here, you know, one New York City block away um, as far as walking um, is um, the convention center. So, you know, very much of a connector if used right. Um, this was part of the bigger greenway system um, when Chattanooga did its can master plan a number of years ago about talking about how can we link and um, move greenways forward in our community. This was actually planned to be part of that and link into um, what we call the university greenway, which moves through the community into our UTC, um, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. So um, it was city owned bonus for us as far as making sure the, the property owners are willing um, and that there's a lot of corporate um, headquarters around it. It's not too far that EPB has their headquarter, Electric Power Board, um, TVA has their uh, Chattanooga headquarters um, you know, a couple blocks away. So it's really um, an opportunity for lunchtime workouts or lunchtime um, just I'm going to go sit in the grass and, and um, decompress from staring at my computer all day. Um, so this is 13th Street, um, north side of the park, uh, Main Street, south side of the park, 
And, oh, I have the clicker. <laughs> this is what it looks like from the ground. Um, and this is uh, six months ago, possibly. Um, overgrown, um, dirt area, people would park in it, semis would use to park overnight and, and to make their deliveries in the morning. So very much of an a area that could have some life fed back into it. Um, this is our current site plan. I'm going to skip this for a minute and come back to it. This was our initial plan um, and what we kind of um, thought, oh, we'll put five pieces of art in the park um, and it will have some green spaces and one will be on um, the south side on Main Street, one will be on the north. It will have this huge deep um, chain link fence holding pond for water for storm, sor uh, storm water storage. Um, this is what the park looks like now as we've kind of, um, you know, that write, rewrite, um, design, redesign, redesign. And I'm going to let Peggy talk about how we got to that point. <coughs> Um, I just want to back up one second, um, you know, thinking about the assets and opportunities and the serendipity, um, the, the jump from the Active Art rejected grant to this is really us going back to the drawing board and engaging a, um, an ar a landscape architect and saying, you know, let's, <coughs> let's really think about this. And he really started... Um, he had done some work in Chattanooga. He's, um, his name's uh, Mike Fowler out of Ross Fowler in Knoxville and really started making us think through this property that Rudy described as a key connector and an opportunity for green space and a way to link the city. And we hadn't really thought of it that way before. And so we shifted all of this sidewalk attention to the park. So when we started writing the grant for the for the main terrain, it was all about the park and this connector and this green space. We, re we retained the active art element to it, but we were less concerned about the sidewalk. Um, so you were asking earlier about our process. Um, Peggy, can I? This is a. I'm going to interrupt just a minute because could you go back one side? Mm -hmm. um, one of one of I mentioned the stormwater um, holding pond. Um, the other great thing about having our, um, our artist that was selected and um, our need as a city to be in compliance with um, stormwater surges is there was funds available um, that could be put in the park if we added that in. And that was a partner that when we originally were talking to people and, you know, we were like, oh, the city has this property and they're willing to play, we didn't realize oh, and there's extra funds if we design it right. And it was a surprise and a great um, idea of just partnerships that um, uh, came out of us nowhere. And on the neck, or on, sorry, if we go back a slide, um, if you notice, there's, none, there's not a big chain link fence, deep, deep hold. Um, the park was designed to hold water in that storm, but not be um, an area where it's not accessible. So um, that's something I forgot to mention earlier, so go All ahead. Right. Um, so we sent this drawing um, out to artists nationwide in an RFQ format um, and put a price tag of $250,000 on it, which is what the grant was for the art. Um, and this is what we asked them to do in relationship to that drawing. Um, use the innovative and interactive public art to promote this active lifestyle that we had talked about earlier. We did not want it to be a playground, so this was really difficult. Because um, typically in public art we say don't touch, don't climb, but at this point we're inviting them to do that. Um, enlarge the footprint by creating a gathering space, which we've talked about was a much needed thing for people just to either walk through and connect, bike, or just sit and hang. Um, serve as a catalyst for the economic and community development that links Maine to the urban green space. And then create a gateway connection that would extend to this Riverwalk extension we've talked about and the south side and um, surrounding communities. Uh, we had about 70 applications and we had a very large committee made up of all these partners that we have been speaking with for about two years that included public works, uh, parks and recreation, public art committee, um, the CrossFit folks and PlayCore, who is a uh, international uh, playground um, equipment company that's based in Chattanooga, and we were really leaning on them for kind of this compliance and um, 
FDA seal of approval of, you know, this stuff is okay for the public to interact with, even though it's not playground equipment. Um, from that large committee, they selected five teams from across the country, and they each received a stipend of, I think, $2,500 um, to come to Chattanooga, bring a maquette or a PowerPoint or however they wanted to sell their, their uh, proposal to this committee. They all came on the same day. And um, the clear winner was um, Thomas Sayre from Clearscapes out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And I'm going to tell you about his proposal, but I want to back up one moment. And Rudy and I were talking last night, should we put this in or should we not? But I think we should. <laughs> based on, you know, I think the lesson that, that we've learned from this thing is it is a process and things do happen for a reason and sometimes what are downfalls or disappointments sometimes turn out to be the best thing and that's when that serendipity thing comes into play. So we didn't get the grant which ended up being a good thing because we got this one and we originally had five shortlisted teams that we invited and, and Thomas Sayre who was our ultimate winner, he was our alternate. And we had one artist drop out so because they were too busy. So we graduated our alternate to our fifth presenter, and he ended up blowing the committee away. And it was the best decision ever. We could have never have planned that, but it, it, it worked out so beautifully in the end. Um, I want to show you this slide just to kind of orient you on the site again. This is you know, Main Street, 13th, and this is the space. Um, if you notice in the middle here, there's three circles with some structure that we'll talk about because this is really his proposal. Um, and then there's this kind of loop aspect to it that we'll talk about in just a minute. So, um, so where's the water going? The water the, is the, here. It's a, um, it's a dip. It's a, a very dip. subtle so well. It will, it's a holding it, tank, so when that's, because we have a combined sewer, sorry if you can hear me, we, uh, Chattanooga has a combined sewer system, and so when you get those four inches and an, and an hour rains, which we're getting more and more, um, you know, what happens to the river, you get raw sewage into it because it, oh, it pushes um, um, all that out. And so what this is doing, it's collecting the water from the buildings around and from the roadways and holding there, and it's slowly going to be released um, into the ground as the ground can, can handle it. And so it's not necessarily hooked up to the sewage system um, directly, but it's more of a holding pond that will dissipate over, over a period of time. Um, so it'll be running apart. So what's that? In a big rain. Yes, it will, it, yeah. it, will, it will be flooded, but it's a, about a three and a half to four foot dip that you can't really see on this but those big green spaces. Um, so. Yeah, so, so we haven't built, intentionally we haven't built anything permanent in those spaces, but they'll be used when there's no water there. So really the, the focus has always been around it and in the middle. Um, so, um, Thomas's proposal, um, he came to Chattanooga and did a lot of research and started thinking about um, our RFQ, which as Rudy mentioned, you know, we originally just for budgetary purposes said, you know, we have budget for up to five pieces of art and we kind of placed where those things would go around this stormwater situation. Um, and what Thomas did is he started looking at connectivity and thinking about bridges and connecting people and spaces and time and place. And if you've been to Chattanooga, you know the Walnut Street Bridge is a, is a wonderful pedestrian bridge and a huge asset and an icon and a connector and a, a great placemaker too. So he's, he kind of got inspiration from this bridge and then this I think we determined was an image from Japan that he used in his presentation. And this is important because um, this pivot element on this pylon is something that, that he decides to utilize. So if you think about a cross section of the main terrain um, aerial shot that we've looked at, what he's done rather than place five different interactive sculptures in this space, he has taken uh, Main Street to 13th and he has created one large installation that if you look at it sideways will look roughly like a bridge shape and he literally has used one piece to connect the 13th side to the Main Street side and encourage people to move through. This was such an elegant solution um, to our RFQ and he really kind of 
um, redesigned the park and became a true partner with our landscape architect and really they became a design team right there and then which was really exciting to see. So um, his initial proposal that you have this bridge aspect um, this would be you know Main Street and this is 13th back here um, what he's proposing to do if you remember those three circles in the middle from the aerial shot is he has these three um, large pylons that are reminiscent of the bridge pylons and on top he's got a truss work uh, contraption that is broken up into three segments that can be lined up in a bridge form by a person. So this form is connected to a wheel system and there's a track around it and the idea is that people can you know, get engaged and be active and exert a little bit of physical activity and even create a game out of it by running this thing around and you know configuring the sculpture the way they want to do it. Um, there's some opportunities for um, lights at the top that do some interesting things at night um, and this was what won the committee over along with this thinking about connecting the whole park as one sculpture. Um, but as we started, after we engaged him and, and hired him on, we really sat down and said, okay, you know, what's going to work? Let's think about all the scenarios day to day. Let's think about maintenance. Let's think about safety. And we pulled in Playcor, who was our advisor to kind of say, you know, these things you can interact with, these things you can't. You know, these are some of the things that we look for um, when we want to think about safety and children and adults. And we quickly determined that the wheels were going to be a problem. Um, so the design evolved to this, which I think is much better and much more elegant. And um, this is a sketch of what is being built today. Um, what has changed is this um, piece with the wheels has gone away. The truss work has become a lot more um, less lacy and flimsy and a lot more sturdy and more reminiscent of what we have in terms of our bridges today. This will be Corten steel and I'll show you some progress shots of that that I just got last week. And these are uh, precast concrete pylons. The idea is that people walk up this path and this is a wheel that you can turn and then it will pivot this around. So rather than pushing it, you'll be turning and still um, be able to line these pieces up and interact and, and move. Um, this is just another shot of a, of a detail showing the, um, the pylon and a bridge and a person walking up. We're still working on the, um, the specifics of what the wheel looks like, but I'm sure it'll be really cool. <laughs> Um, so here's the pylons. Um, around the whole park is a literal track um, that people can use to run, to jog, to walk. Um, the uh, CrossFit uh, company that I've told you about this right down the street, they have been with us every step of the way and have really advised on how they would use this as a circuit training with their clients. I mean, they're literally a block away. Um, so the idea is this is a traditional path uh, or track that people can utilize in a workout. But um, interspersed along the track, we've got um, text uh, in the form of haiku, which I think is a, a wonderful and interesting way to get people to kind of slow down, look, read, think. They're functional and they're mile markers, but um, they're also involving the literary arts, which is fantastic. Um, what he's done is he's kind of approached haiku through um, a traditional way of addressing seasons, and he's divided um, these up into four quadrants. It's kind of complicated to see on this slide, but you've got spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and there's A, B, C, and D. And so if you said, here's a spring day, the young girl skipping, are these three segments. So a spring day, the young girl's skipping. And you could reverse that. You can you know, uh, create different um, combinations as you walk and run and play. But all of these have to do with seasons or bridging or moving through or connecting. And most of these are done by haiku masters. These have evolved a little bit since this slide, um, but those will be embedded in terrazzo with, um, with an acid um, inkjet or water jet cutout. You want to talk about game time? Yeah. Um, so we've mentioned game time and or play core. They have two kind of umbrella names. Um, Chattanooga is lucky that they're headquartered there. So, you know, using our assets of our local corporate um, 
uh, donors, um, supporters, sponsors, and um, we originally, as Peggy mentioned, got um, Tom Norquist, um, who works at Game Time, involved more as our safety check and for him to be able to smooth over with the city any um, anxiety they might have on you're going to have people engaged in the artwork what we that's an insurance issue that's a safety issue how do you make a park for adults you know this hasn't been vetted before and so originally it was just like hey Tom will you come in and check off the things that need to be checked off on safety and as the park progressed and there was this two-year conversation as um, what does this look like um, Playcore has gotten excited about developing a line of um, uh, active art elements um, that could be launched really um, in any community that some, a community could buy. Um, Peggy, will you go back two slides really quick? So what's going to happen is they are developing five, uh, what we're calling fitness nodes, just to add some more excitement to the park and to really engage our local, um, just across the corner, um, gym, get CrossFit, get built CrossFit um, gym, so they can be animators to the park on a daily basis. And so these five nodes um, are right up, um, in each kind of corner on the outside of that track. And so, um, now you can feel for mine flipping forward. This is a picture of us, and Tom is drawing with chalk on the concrete floor of the gym. And Mike Alley, who is this fellow that's being pointed out. I'm going to put a halo over him because he's been so great. He, has, <laughs> he, he is the guy that says, this, this can't be a, a, a plasticky park. We've got to have a thenic. And, you know, he'll, he'll call you at 2 in the afternoon and say, I've got this idea. And, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, Mike. You know, and, and, but at the same time, he's been an angel um, for, to push us to think bigger than, than what this is originally. Now, who, who is he, he is the owner and operator of a CrossFit gym, which CrossFit is kind of the new fitness craze. Um, uh, we, Peggy and myself and our kind of team of uh, folks that have been working on this, <laughs> uh, Mike made us come work out one day, and I don't think I could. I think made is the key word. <laughs> uh, re required. Made. Um, <laughs> And I don't think I could walk straight for a week <laughs> afterwards. But, um, you know, Tom has really latched onto this. And it's, I don't think if we would have um, initially, if our original idea would have gone through two and a half years ago, he would have said, yeah, I'll check it off. And we won't really support you in a financial way by adding these elements and being, letting the main terrain be a testing ground for this equipment. Um, so um, we have now... As Mike says, this is authentic. I can, I can use this and I'll put my um, gym members out on this equipment and give them a hard workout on it. So, um, let's Yeah, and, look. and you know, one thing that, that we didn't know because we're not part of the, the world of playgrounds is that what Tom has been looking at from a playground developer perspective is this idea of adult play and adult fitness. And you know, had we not partnered with someone out of our realm and our silo, we would never have known that. So as he's getting involved in us, his little brain's turning and he's traveling all over the world and he's thinking, you know, I could, I've got adults that are gonna be coming over from CrossFit. We could really launch a, a prototype line here and, and it could be a viable thing that we could market. So that's a trend I just learned about through working with him and that's just been a fabulous and unforeseen partnership and you know they have invested a lot of money I don't know what that is because it hasn't been something that they've given to the park but that's a whole nother level of partnership and financial support that you know at the end of the day we can we can add one, into the mix. One more note on that is as much as Mike has the gym owner has been pushing to say I want this to be usable um, the arts folks that have wear that hat are pushing back and saying, but it has to be elegant and it has to fit in the park and it has to be beautiful as a piece of art when no one's playing on it. And so it's been a, it's been a struggle at times um, and a challenge, but it's been because so many people have been at the table and have been a part of the conversation for a long time that, you know, we're hoping when the ribbon's cut, it's just a grandiose place. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we broke ground I believe at the very end of September and it's been on the fast track since we plan to open the park at the end of this calendar year 
So while we're breaking ground, Thomas Sayre um, in North Carolina is having things fabricated and he'll be bringing those probably in about two weeks. Tomorrow morning, we're having the official groundbreaking ceremony. Um, so we're you know, gonna be speechifying and celebrating. And um, I wanted to show you a couple of images of the progress because it is, this is happening as we speak. Um, this is you know, the beginning of the, of the dirt moving phase, um, which is, was a very happy day because we have been very behind schedule and that is just the nature of, as many of you probably know that work with cities, it's the nature of bureaucracy. Um, and this is, you know, you can kind of get a sense of how this is going to shape up now. Um, when you think about that brownfield, you know, kind of dry, crusty, um, you know, tumbleweed shot, and then now it's just some clear dirt. You can really get a sense of how it's shaping up. This is a great slide as you can kind of start, you know, seeing this track and this kind of um, oval um, piece to it and these are some footings um, you know in preparation for Thomas bringing his um, sculptural elements in um, this is a shot from this is looking this is Maine down here there's lookout mountain in the background which all of a sudden has popped out <laughs> we, we couldn't see that before and that's just you know a fantastic backdrop um, to have that um, these are um, some progress shots that Thomas sent me of the truss work um, you know, this is a, the drawing here. Um, these are the pieces ready for assembly. They are Corten steel, so they're going to get a nice, you know, kind of rusty patina over time. Um, and then this is the beginning of assembly. Um, this is his team in Raleigh that have started putting these together so you can get a sense of what those are going to look like. Um, this is a detail of the precast um, concrete for the pylons that we talked about. And um, another opportunity that came up that we weren't planning on um, was a call from the National Endowment in, um, I guess, mid-September, well, September the 12th. <laughs> um, we got a call about two weeks before the 12th of September um, saying that Chairman Rocco Landsman was going to be in Chattanooga for an um, Arts and Education Partners Conference. And he'd love to sit down and meet with us and just hear about the progress of the park. Well, we couldn't do that. We had to turn it into like a big public event. We didn't want to keep them to ourselves. <laughs> so, so we, you know, it, it was a lot of work, um, but we, you know, rallied together and it was a really wonderful opportunity to talk about the park and creative placemaking um, and the NEA in a public forum. Um, we are really used to doing that in Chattanooga. We, we like talking and we like um, charrettes and we had just come off of a year-long process of these urban design challenges that um, River City Company had done that really talk about possibilities and, and, and planning and design possibilities and dreaming for different parts of town. So people were kind of ripe and the seed was planted. So we put together a panel um, that was moderated um, by Ann Coulter, who's not the Ann Coulter that you're thinking, but <laughs> Ann Coulter, <laughs> who is a planner and a consultant um, who lives in Chattanooga, who's fabulous. Um, so we turned it into a big event, and we had standing room only um, in, a, in a big ballroom, much like um, this, and people listening and talking about creative placemaking. So here's Ann here and the chairman. Uh, Mike Fowler, who is our landscape architect we've mentioned, was part of it. Um, this is a local architect, um, Eric Myers, and then Sarah Morgan with the Lindhurst Foundation, who's um, not here today, but she's certainly been an integral part, and then Larry Zender, um, who is our um, administrator of Parks and Recreation. So, you know, some really key partners that shared really different viewpoints about what is creative placemaking from their professional perspectives. Um, there's the illustrious Dan right there. <laughs> um, so that, that is the main terrain. Um, we hope that you all will come and see it. Um, it has sort of been a, a leap of faith project, but um, it's been an inspiring idea that a lot of people have been invested in from lots of different segments of the community, and we just really felt like it was the right thing to do, and, and I, I think it's going to be a, an incredible project, um, and will hopefully be open and, and working and ready at the end of this calendar year. Um, so I hope that you'll come and, and visit it and see it, and we can, we can show it off. Goals, again, the project goals, 
Yeah, sure. Um, one of the, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, like as Rudy said, you know, we had this space, so we, we certainly wanted it to connect and be a, a wonderful park and green space, but the grant that we received was for art. Um, so, so this particular goal was art related. We have lots of goals for the park itself. You know, there's a stormwater goal, there's a CrossFit goal, there's um, urban planning goal. But in terms of the art, you know, we really asked them to, you know, think about all these things. But in terms of the art, we, it had to be interactive and it had to encourage physical activity. And there's not many examples out there that aren't playgrounds. And it was a head scratcher for the artists. And a couple of them called and said, you know, you don't want a playground equipment, right? And we said, yes. And they said, well, how do you do that? And we're like, well, that's the challenge. Let's, you know, let us know what you can do. And, you know, Thomas did a, a great job. So it, it's about the art, but it's also about the space um, for him. And, you know, this connectivity, you know, that's certainly a huge goal. And we want it to be maintainable and safe. And we want it to be a great piece of art. You know, I mean, he is a, a sculptor um, and an artist, and he is not a planner. So, you know, all of those things, you know, quality, um, I, I don't think we got any proposals that were not excellent quality by artists that were very accomplished. So, you know, all, it's sculpture at the end of the day. Uh, we, we've been very good when you ask about um, goals. You know, we had the NEA goals, we had the community goals. Um, and we've been, I don't want to say we've been used, sales, uh, used car salesmen, but um, we've been very slick about how we've been pitching it to different partners to say, this is what you can play on this to make it an overarching, just a better place. Um, and one thing, just to follow that up, um, with Thomas Sayre, when he came in, he said, um, and I, I just remember this about his presentation, he said, you know, there's, I'm, at, I'm an artist at this level in my life where I can be choosy about the, the projects I take, take on. And he said, this one has all the elements to make me feel like I'm going to invest in a community and make a change in the place. And he has really championed that um, the whole time with his design process, with the, the conference calls that we have six different people in six different places on the line trying to work out the details of it. He has really been a champion on that. So and you had a question? Yes, yes. Okay. We're kind of where y'all were. We, we wrote the Our Town Grant mm -hmm. and not receive it. Mm -hmm. um, and the, when they did the critique, when NEA had the critique, there were, there were a couple things. One was we matched our, our, the 250000 with in kind from a construction company that was mm -hmm. going to do all this stuff for us. And they said, in the video it said, in kind is acceptable. In the critique it said, mm. yeah, what you take cash, you know. <laughs> uh, and, and also, they. Uh, talk about the community involvement, and it, it seems like y'all have had an ongoing thing that y'all could draw from, where we would have to create that kind of community involvement. Um, and, and, and unless I misunderstood something, and, and the, the final question I wanted to ask you about your match, the mm -hmm. community involvement, and it seems like there's a lot of different of you that would, who, who actually wrote the grant? Well, Allen Arts, Arts wrote the, the grant, grant, and we had, um, Rudy and myself and Marilyn Harrison from Allied Arts, you know, we we kind of proofed it and you know that all the we we proofed it and kind of group thought it, um, but it was ultimately Allied Arts that wrote the grant. And there was, as you know, I mean, there's so much yeah, there are a lot stuff. Of to yeah. So you know, they did an excellent job doing that. They had received a grant before um, from the NEA, so I think you know it, they knew how to navigate that, which was fantastic. Um, because we hadn't done that, and the city hadn't done that before, and I'm with the city. Um, so there was some, the learning curve was small. I guess, and one other thing is, it's obvious y'all had to invest money before you could submit this grant, and we were trying not to spend money because we don't have the money. Yeah. You to get a landscape. Do you uh, want to talk about? Art, sure. and all, all the yeah. stuff that's going on there. So the total budget of the park is $1.2 million, and, and, you know, that's been... Stormwater has helped out with that. Lindhurst has helped with that. The city has helped with that. Um, there's been some in-kind with PlayCore and their connections, um, and um, of course NEA. And um, so Lindhurst has had, you know, we had a larger budget because we've been working in the Main Street area, and this just.
fit in so perfectly to say, okay, this is how we make that jump. And we were able to hire before the grant or just really leading up to the grant. Um, and, and this was, let me go back a minute. Um, after we did not receive the 25th Mayor's Initiative Grant, and that one really came to us on the 11th hour. Um, a department within the city um, said, this is a great opportunity, we need to apply, and, and they showed up at Lindhurst with, you know, kind of a, a team which uh, made of great people saying, you know, where can, we, where can we do this? And we came up with a couple of ideas, but where our funds were already allocated by our board to say, please continue the work in this area was on Main Street. And so that's why we initially looked at it. Um, through those conversations in that 11th hour to 12th hour to, oh, we didn't get it, we were like, this is a great idea for, for the foundation to invest in. And then with the, the NEA Our Town grant, we continued that work and said, okay, we'll apply for it under this. And if we get it, it might look like this. If we don't, we can, do, we can implement some of these activities um, without that through just foundation dollars and our partnership, our working partnership um, that's been cultivated over the years with the city. Um, and so there was investment beforehand, um, but it was adding on to a body of work that was moving forward with or without um, national funds. Um, anybody else? Questions? Yeah. Will you speak up a little bit? Well, it was lots of questions by our Parks and Rec management. Yeah. Um, well, and, and we, we have a, um, our, my department is part of Parks and Recreation. So I'm, you know, we're with the city and we have a collection of about 100 permanent works in our, in our city now that we manage. And we also have rotating exhibitions. So, you know, there's a process and we have a mayor appointed board that's a public art committee. I mean, we, we have the infrastructure there, but in terms of the nature of asking for the interaction, the, the play core piece was really key to make the city feel comfortable. Because play core is a playground company that works with the city all the time in building and, and so forth. Um, and you know, they, they rely on them as the experts for this interactivity. Um, and so getting them on board and getting Parks and Recreation to feel comfortable with that um, was critical. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know how else to answer that other than we, we tried to address that early on. Um, the city has been at the table from the very beginning in thinking about the ideas to the selection of the art. There were things that weren't selected because of problems down the road. Um, and, you know, like I was telling somebody else earlier, at the end of the day, this is a piece of sculpture to add to our collection. So we judge it against the same criteria we do anything else, which, you know, is, is a comfortable process for everybody that we're used to. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Any other questions? It's only 11.30. Okay. Uh, so you used the model from East Main to move to John to West Main. Are you to the point where you can think about what's next? <laughs> we have plans. Yeah, we have plans. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, you know, right now our noses are so tor on the grindstone of just being like, we have to get this done. And there's so many moving parts to it um, that a lot of ideas were flushed out during those initial planning phases that might be picked up as we move forward. But, um, you know, as for now, let's, let's focus on that December 31st. And, and one of the things that I guess we haven't mentioned is the reason we're really pushing on that is... <laughs> The NEA has deadlines, <laughs> and, 
and we had to spend our money. Um, we had one extension. Um, they probably wouldn't appreciate me saying that they allowed it an extension, but it was for six months. You know, in, initially this program uh, project was supposed to be done on July 31st or June 30th, um, July 1st, and um, we early on were like, we are not going to make it there because of um, bureaucracy, because just of um, the artist being pushed, and we think it can be a better place if you give us an extension. And they allowed that, but they said, you get one, and don't <laughs> come back for more. So that's really why our big push is. Um, and maybe we'll come back in a couple of years at this conference and update you on how we're. <laughs> is your artist your fabricator as well? Um, it, in our eyes, yes, but he is, he is outsourcing like the, uh, the precast concrete pieces. He's having a concrete person in Charlotte do that for him. So it, it is under his budget and his management. Um, so he is, he is fabricating some on site in the studio, but he's, he's jobbing and outsourcing others. Um, so, and he, you know, it, it's all engineered. I mean, he, he's, it's. Um, he's a pro. I mean, he's done big projects before, so yeah, he knows. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he's got a big budget to work with, too. So, you know, we're able to, you know, really get it done right. So was NEA's deadline for completing the project or spending the money? Spending um, the money. Spending the money. But we'd like to have them well, uh, be yeah. in track. <laughs> yeah. Because um, it's a great leverage to uh, city officials to say, you know, there's this federal money on, and if you mess it up, we might never get a federal grant again. And uh, it, so we'd like to have it all buttoned up because you lose that leverage after that. So again, we're being salespeople and pulling and pushing when we have to. Um, one thing um, before we go on, so much to my chagrin, we've been recorded. And Shannon from the Tennessee Arts Commission said that um, by the end of November, all of these presentations, including the ones that are going on simultaneously with this, will be online. So um, if you need to look back at the slides or hear something we've said again, um, it will be online. Um, I'm guessing that the PowerPoint will be available if you ask them. Um, if not, you know, feel free to contact myself or Peggy, and we'd be glad to share it with you or um, you know, answer any questions you might have at that 2 o'clock in the morning when you wake up. And, you know, just write it down and give us and shoot us an email. So, uh, any other questions? Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.